Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome to our oh, today's AMA session of Big One Exchange. Today we are glad to see you with uh, Valerian Bennett. He is a managing director of POP Network and this is the project what we are uh, ready to list uh, in a couple days on our Big One Exchange. So happy to see you today and today you uh, can uh, hear more about uh, POP Network and and uh, you you can get no more details uh deeper ones from uh, valerian so hello valerian glad to see you today excellent thanks for having me dimitri yeah so uh, uh at the start please tell uh, about your background uh in blockchain and maybe in general yeah, for sure. So I'm Valerian Bennett, Managing Director of Pop Network, and we're building a decentralized media streaming platform. So uh, the idea is that we help content creators uh, make more money by distributing directly to, to their community. The goal, of course, is content creators get a better and uh, more fair share of what they create. Communities get better content that makes everyone happy. Um, and basically take all the money that we're all giving to Google and Facebook and YouTube um, and all the other big tech platforms uh, and actually put that value where it belongs, which is the content creators themselves. And the most value, of course, is being created by, by the communities and their engagement. So uh, as a peer-to-peer -peer network, uh, if you run a pop master node, which is the, the backbone software that runs the network you store and stream media, um, in a decentralized fashion, and for uh, for uh, your reward, you earn the Pop Network token. Uh, the blockchain pays you just for uh, distributing content. So, super excited for the launch of our Pop Master Node. It's in testnet now. Uh, we're doing our final security audit. So, in the next uh, few weeks, we're actually going to release that to the public, so you can start making making money with Pop. And I got into this. Um, as uh, uh, initially from the entertainment side of, of things. So my background is in the entertainment industry. I um, uh, worked in Hollywood for the past decade plus, uh, working in primarily as a television editor and producer. I worked on uh, the real world for MTV, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, a bunch of different mainstream uh, network television shows. Before that, I did uh, music video editing so uh, a lot of uh, hip hop music videos, Lil Wayne, 50 Cent, Wu-Tang Clan. Um, so I've seen how the machine works from the highest levels from the inside. Um, and obviously I had a very uh, firsthand experience about how unfair the system is, how uh, uh, a certain, uh, just a, basically a handful of companies control so much power and um, take so much of the profits um, and seeing what blockchain can do just in general, seeing what Bitcoin did to banks, seeing um, what DeFi can do in terms of really taking power from a few centralized sources and distributing it directly to people um, and being able to apply that theory to non-financial applications like Pop Network, um, it really has the, the potential to really turn everything inside out and ultimately make things better for you, the consumers and make things better for content creators and make it better for everyone who participates. Nice, very nice. Uh, your background is very huge and very interesting. So I think uh, Pop Network will get a really good um, experience on this market and uh, a great opportunity to grow up. So uh, in general, uh, why this idea of creation of uh, pop network uh, get to your team and why you think uh, this project will be suitable for current market is current ec um, entertainment economy ready uh, to see this project like this yeah i mean i think it's a great time i mean we've been uh, working in development on this for for the past couple of years we went to uh, the boost vc accelerator uh, in silicon valley which Funny enough is where I was originally born, um, uh, heart of Silicon Valley in San Jose. Uh, the Boost VC Accelerator is won by Adam Draper, who's yeah. uh, first investor in Coinbase. Uh, his dad bought the Silk Road Bitcoins. 
Um, so long history, one in technology and venture capital, but I'm really one of the, the first. So actually, we invested in, to you, yeah, Boost VC. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're uh, really one of the, the first and biggest names into into crypto, um, and it's just one of those things where um, a lot of the things that we've been working on for a while are are really coming to to the to the front at a, at a lot of different angles. So um, we're hearing about the creator economy. Um, we're seeing everything that's happening with with NFTs. So you're seeing this crossover of technology and sort of uh, mainstream pop culture. So uh, a lot of people are 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 ready for something something like this. Um, in particular, with the the creator economy, I think not only I mean creators have been uh, very acutely aware of of the problems um, of declining revenues and seeing um, you know companies like like Google slash YouTube. Uh, and Facebook take a bigger and bigger uh, share of, of revenue from what they're doing. But now we're seeing it from the other end, from the uh, consumer side of things, from the community side of things, from people who just enjoy watching and reading and listening and, you know, taking, uh, taking input of, of all the things that we um, previously took for granted. I think there's, there's a sense that, okay, the system as it's working right now, something's not quite right and people are, are willing to change, especially in the light of the last, you know, what year and a half, where you haven't been able to go to concerts, you haven't been able to go to movies, um, you haven't been able to to go outside and, and entertain yourselves in the way that we've just, um, you know, that we've all become accustomed to. So um, now that things are are getting back, that sort of experience has sort of opened everyone up. I think to um, trying new things and and not taking as much for granted before so um in a sense i think that makes it makes it perfect for for us i think a lot of people with crypto in particular are just getting a lot more comfortable people are getting a lot more familiar with blockchain um so i think just a lot of a convergence of a bunch of different things is really making it the, the perfect time for for pop network to launch perfect perfect um uh, and i want to ask uh, a question where current crypto market is quite big right now it's many projects uh and many competitors so uh, what is the killer future uh pop network has and uh, how like actually you want to attract non-crypto investors to invest on it Sure. So I think the the one thing for us as as creators of a project like the, of a project like this and, and entrepreneurs is is realizing the stage that we're at. Yes, there are competitors, but not really. <laughs> right? There's so much that we have to do for ourselves to become successful. And even if you take all the crypto media projects, put them together, they would be one percent of of YouTube's revenue. Right? With like a fraction of a, a percent of of Facebook's revenue. So we try not to get distracted looking at other crypto projects and really, you know, take a big picture approach of, okay, what does the next five years look like? What does the next 10 years look like? What do the next 20 years look like? Um, and as someone who bought his first Bitcoin in 2013, which seems like long ago in crypto time, um, in technology time, it's not that long at all, right? So you look five years ago, you know, what were the, the killer products, the, the, the killer uh, coins and tokens? And you'll see like maybe one in 10 of those are still around um, and probably less than one of those is, is, you know, relevant, right? So things change so, so fast. So um, to look at another crypto project that's kind of doing something similar and to be even concerned about that, that I think is in general, that's just a distraction. Um, if you're really looking to continue uh, to build something like this. And it's going to take years, if not decades for it to fully come alive, right? Look at Bitcoin, right? We've, you know, I first heard about Bitcoin in 2011 and that's like 10 years, right? It started in 2009 and I think we're still just barely scratching the surface, right? So uh, it's important to take, to take a long, a long-term view. Having said that, uh, the thing that we do especially well, I think, is it's a really good cross-section of both the technology and the entertainment side, right? Um, so with my background in Hollywood, um, understanding the, the system, how it worked, uh, gives you a unique perspective and trying to create an alternative for the dominant system, right? It's the reason why you see so many bankers start to get into Bitcoin. It's like 
okay, you want to recreate the global financial system, but you don't actually have any experience with the global financial system, and that kind of doesn't, doesn't work, right? So it's having the perspective of knowing how the machine works and then taking that and applying it to uh, the technology and the product to create a viable alternative that actually works for, for people. So um, as I said, my background's in the inter entertainment industry, although I was born in, uh, and raised in, in San Jose, California, which is the literally the heart of, of Silicon Valley. Next door is Apple and Google and Facebook, Menlo Park and Cupertino and Mountain View. Um, so I've always grown up in, in technology, and this is just sort of a, a perfect combination of, of things. And still having uh, all those relationships from my time in Hollywood that with uh, managers and directly with content creators, with um, other companies that once we actually get through this part of building up the technology, having content creators that we all know their names um, that can bring a sizable, uh, and this is super important, a sizable non-crypto specific audience, that's really where the growth comes from, right? Um, and I think you'll, you're starting to see that with, with NFTs when you start to see um, people who you don't think of as, you know, being, you know, technologists who are just mainstream content creators, sports teams. Um, but the common thing is that they have really passionate audience. And ultimately, that's how you get an application like Pop Network um, to really go mainstream. It's like being able to do the tech part right, um, which is hard enough. But when you combine that with the non-technical crowd and being able to reach out to um, people that have a million person, 10 million people uh, in terms of their followings and really bring those people into the game, that's where things start to take off. Okay, sounds very nice. Uh, and uh, if we go straight to some competitors, maybe, uh, so what distinguishes uh, Pop Network from similar projects, maybe in crypto, maybe in uh, just entertainment uh, companies world? Yeah, I think it's a it's a very delicate balance, right? Because you want to first and foremost uh, be inclusive of of the community, right? Um, and I think you see a lot of um, let's call them crypto media projects that sort of lean one way or or the other, um, meaning they can be a great project, but they don't really allow the the core ownership uh, of the platform to people, right? So it becomes you know a semi centralized federation where you have um, a lot of good functionality, but if you or I or any average person want to participate um, and really participate in the upside of, of the project and take ownership of it, it's kind of hard to do. Um, and we, at our core, fundamentally believe that the project is much better served by having as many people uh, take part as, as possible, right? So um, to put that into a concrete example, our pop master. Uh, which is the, as I mentioned, the core piece of software that stores and distributes content. Um, once we get that solid, then you can start to build the, the YouTube, the Netflix, the decentralized Spotify, the decentralized Audible on top of that. But really you need that core piece of software. Um, the way that we built it, it's super simple. If you have a decent uh, broadband connection um, and you have a hard drive that's, that has space, uh, as long as you can operate the, the, the crypto wallet, which is like the most technical part of it, you can participate in, in the network. It doesn't take any expensive hardware, which you see a lot of, um, you know, other systems have. It doesn't take uh, a, a command line uh, interface to, to figure it out. It's basically a souped up torrent client mashed up with the crypto wallet, right? So if you know how to work those two things, you can on a fair level be able to participate in in the network by storing and streaming the media. So that's first and foremost, it's super, super accessible, um, no expensive hardware, no expensive software, um, no extreme technical knowledge to, to participate. And the purpose of that is because we want to have as many people around the world um, be able to be able to participate. Um, and the other side of it is the, the specific thing about uh, building something like this. Uh, and I think we all know that it, it can get uh, into the weeds pretty quickly, right? It can it can start to uh, or maybe get too much into the jargon or too much into the tech. Um, and really, with our experience and background in the entertainment industry, we know that ultimately we're going to have to 
to convince content creators of note um, to be able to, to use this. So it's got to be really simple to, to use from the creator tools as well. And that's really the second half of the year for us. That's really what we're going to be focused on getting to is building those tools and the, the entire tool set uh, to be able to, to get a content creator, content creators on board that have a sizable enough audience. Um, and to do that, you have to be able to speak that language uh, in a way that I think a lot of more technical projects don't really approach. Ultimately, if we want to get a big audience, we need to get people that have big audiences. And to do that, we have to keep things as crystal clear and as, as simple as possible and use and leverage the relationships that we have in the entertainment industry to be able to do that for successful. Great, great. It's a very huge deal what actually people can use your network uh, without any hardware. Because uh, we all remember the story with Tesla and Bitcoin when um, we said it's uh, <laughs> too much uh, 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 expensive and uh, huge energetic consumption. So uh, people need to know what uh, uh, there's a new generations of networks like uh, Pop Network, which we are able to use uh, from your mobile phone and around the world and no necessary to run master nodes on uh, huge hardware with uh, expensive uh, um, equipment. Okay, so uh, uh, I see what your project is very solid. Uh, your team is very energetic and have a huge plans. So maybe you can share some project perspectives for the next three years, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first things first is uh, super excited to be launching on on big one in, in the coming days. Uh, obviously, uh, big one is a, an exchange that uh, is big in and of itself and has the ambition to, to continue growing into, into different markets. So uh, I think that's super exciting for, for us as, as we continue um, getting more familiar with people around the world, getting our project uh, in front of more people around the world. And, and big one is helping us do that in, in a big way. So uh, super excited about that. Uh, shortly after that, um, we're going to be adding uh, liquidity to our different uh, decentralized exchanges to both Uniswap and PancakeSwap, uh, which is the next step after uh, listing on, on Big One. Uh, from a development side of things, uh, as I mentioned, so much is, is happening. We're doing our, our final security audit with uh, our master node going to mainnet. Um, if you go to Pop Network right now, you can download uh, the testnet version just to get familiar uh, with, with how it works. Um, but super excited because in the coming weeks, it, it's just going to be a whole new ball game once we once we go to to mainnet and start getting uh, content on board the, the network. Um, and you're right, Dimitri. I think it's it's super important um, that we have software that works um, with you know any standard machine, hard drive, and and bandwidth. I think uh, what you're seeing with um, uh, the big mining shift. Uh, that's happening around the world when one uh, you know one territory can basically shut an entire mining industry down. You, you're seeing all the different um, side effects of, of some of the other uh, energy intensive um, projects that that uh, end up having a lot of different ramifications if you um, if you don't take care of that early. So I'm super excited to construct the way construct our project in the in the way that we have looking specifically for um, good long-term long -term stability. Um, above and beyond that, the rest of the year, as I mentioned, is really focused on um, getting, towards, uh, uh, getting towards the point where we get big content creators on board towards the end of the year. A um, couple of things I can't quite announce, but I'm super excited uh, about towards, uh, towards that goal. Um, some, some big events coming up the, towards the end of the year. So uh, definitely go to our site, thepopnetwork.org. Uh, click the get update button so we can, uh, you know, stay in touch. And of course, come to our telegram t.me slash pop network. And then really beyond that, it's, uh, I mean, broadly, if we really want to kind of fill this thing out in, in the way that we want over the next couple of years, um, our vision has always been that it's going to be uh, a cross platform, cross blockchain world. Um, so you look at some of the uh, blockchains that are are um, really focused on, on speed and stability uh, and consumer growth. Uh, I think you can easily see us obviously on the Ethereum blockchain. You can see us on the Binance uh, smart chain, um, but there's a few other chains I think that 
uh, would be uh, well suited for for a project like ours. And, and that's really how we're thinking about, uh, you know, ultimately the next three years, the next five years is to really become a service that people use and ultimately not really think about what the blockchain is, right? They ultimately just want to use the product because it's a great product that they want to use. Um, so if some people in some part of the world use the flow blockchain and some people in another part use the Binance blockchain and some part, some people use Chia or uh, Solana, uh, ultimately that shouldn't matter to consumers. What should matter uh, is that they're getting what they need to make themselves happy. And we as entrepreneurs and creators are giving them what they want. Great, great, fantastic. Um, uh, and we just talked with you about uh, uh, many projects what uh, actually not survive on this market and like one from the 10 actually existing and work some kind of. Uh, so uh, probably the biggest problem uh on this market and with these projects because they don't have enough utilities for their tokens and don't have enough uh, plans for the token and economy development so talking about the pop uh, token uh can you share with community about some utilities of this this token and why they need to hold it buy it and uh store it uh, and like using your economy yeah yeah and this okay this part we will geek out a little bit on because it's 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 always exciting to me and, and just to kind of uh, do exactly that right which is create a token that people actually use i think we know um as uh people who are just you know crypto enthusiasts that you know sometimes you buy a token just because of the name and sometimes you get it you know just because you see the numbers going up um and then sometimes you get them and then you actually use them and that to me is the most the most exciting um so the first function of of the pop network token is that you need it to um, stake within the pop master node which of course uh, stores and streams media so um, if you think of it as the uh, as the the software that stores and streams media and if you stake it through uh, that piece of software that does two things one uh, it tells the network that you're serious right that you're committed to to the network but two um, similar to DeFi, it's like you stake and then you get rewards, right? So that that has a familiarness to it, right? So um, people can be comfortable in, in understanding that part. But since you're staking, staking it through uh, the master node, uh, that ensures that the node is always up up and running, right? So if you look at uh, one of the big problems of, of any peer-to-peer -peer file sharing system for the last, what, two decades is that the nodes go down right it's like you you find something you're sharing something and all of a sudden somebody turns their machine off and then that content is is gone um but if your node has to be up to earn your tokens then what are the odds of you keeping that machine on that's very high right so that's one of the great things that crypto has added to um just the evolution of, of software is that it solves one of the biggest problems um of peer-to-peer uh, -peer systems, which is uh, technically we, we call it uh, uh, persistence, right? The the ability for a machine to actually stay on the network. So rather than have this fluctuating on, off, up and down content disappearing, if you if you say, hey, I bought this token and I want to stake it, you put it on a DeFi system, you leave it, and it just doesn't matter. But if you put it with the Pop Master node, then you're getting you're getting two benefits. One you're earning by keeping it on. And now the network is benefiting because if it's on, then it's stable. Now, once we have that, you know, that's why we're talking about over the next uh, course of, of the rest of this year, really focused on uh, getting content creators on board. Now we can take that piece of data, that information and say, hey, listen, we've got this network. It's this big spread around the world. And most importantly, it's not doing this. It's doing this, right? We've got like a nice stable. So if you come on board with us, you can see that your stuff's going to be there. It's going to be consistent. It's going to perform um, and really take some of the anxiety away from uh, trying a new type of system. Um, because I'll tell you from a content creator standpoint, so many people are super excited uh, about everything that we're seeing with blockchain. But you have to realize from a non-crypto perspective, it's still kind of weird, right? It's like people don't really understand it. They, you know, they're, they're a little 
um, uh, apprehensive, let's say to, you know, is it a scam? Is it all going to go away? Is it, you know, we see all these spikes and then people disappear and right. So you want to have, most importantly, you want to be able to, um, to create an image of stability. That means stability in the project. That means stability in the technology. That means stability in the token and be able to take that to have real conversations with real people who have a history, who have uh, a name, who have uh, popularity, because they're risking that by trying anything new, right? Because the old thing, although it's got its problems, clearly for you know a certain segment of, of creator, it's working well enough, right? So for them to risk that and try something new, you really have to present a picture of, of stability. So using the POP token to incentivize our POP master nodes to stay up, that's the first and most basic function. But if we do that, then that opens the door to, to so much more. Amazing. It sounds really amazing. So maybe any other uh, token utilities, uh, for example, if you touch in entertainment sphere, you know, uh, there's a many cases where people able to buy some uh, tickets or uh, like uh, even merchants for with tokens. So maybe you have a plan to implement it in the future? Absolutely, absolutely, and and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but but you know exactly exactly where this is going, right? Which is once we do have that base, then it opens up the the door to to so much. Um, if you talk about the creator economy, that's fundamentally what it's all about. It's about uh, re redoing the economic system so that it's more fair to people that that uh, that participate, and that's not only for for content creators, but it's also for for communities um, and uh, and consumers, right? Which is, you think about where the value in the creator economy comes from. Yes, it comes from the content creators, but really it's nothing unless you have people, right? Unless you have the community, unless you, um, you know, have the people who are actually consuming it on, on the other end. Otherwise you're, you know, you're just the person in a garage creating for yourself, right? So you have to create for, for other people. And if you look at the value that you are creating, that communities are creating, when do you get, when do you receive that? And typically you don't, right? Um, and the one extreme of, of Instagram and, uh, and Facebook, you literally get nothing, <laughs> right? Um, and you see them print, I mean, Facebook's what, like almost 30 billion a quarter, um, just every, you know, every three months, they just like print a you know, quarter of a of hundred billion dollars, which is kind of an insane. Um, basically on the value that you as a community create. So uh, if you can start to, through cryptocurrency, incentivize people and really help sh help them share in the value that they create, um, that's, I mean, it's just, it's an amazing, amazing potential for, for all of this technology to be really, really transformative. Really nice. Um, I, I'm really amazed uh, how a uh, huge potential uh, have a pop network so uh thank you so much valerian for the sharing this information uh hope a community will find a many, many many useful things and uh will join your project and check your website it will be in subs in description of this video so if you would like to uh, um, uh, share something and add in the end uh please go ahead Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks. Thanks so much again for, for having me. And I think, um, it's funny, uh, in the pre-talk before this, you mentioned that there would be some, some editing involved. And as I mentioned, I'm a, a career television editor. So, uh, in my head, I'm, I'm seeing the, the, the graphics come across as, <laughs> as we close this out. Um, so yeah, uh, first and foremost, I just want to make sure that, uh, the people of, of the big one community and, and the pub network communities, it's, uh, that we have this wonderful opportunity for for us all to to grow together uh looking forward to to being part of of the big one family and uh looking forward to not only this coming week as we list on on big one um, but really all the things that we have uh coming forward in the next days weeks months and, and years of working together so thank you thank you so much glad uh pop network is part of the family thank you thank you glad to, glad to hear this so dear community thank you so much for uh participation in this summer se section uh you're always able to check it on our youtube channel 
So please join Big One and trade uh, POP uh, token uh, in a couple days. It will be listed. So check website, check project, check the team, and uh, we will see a huge and uh, growing history of this project, and we will definitely keep eye on it. So thank you so much for being with us. And remember, Big One Exchange is more than just your asset security. Thank you, guys, and goodbye. Bye-bye.